Hey everybody. So, this time we're going to talk about gold and copper in Alabama. Last time we talked a little bit about this, you know, looking not just for gold, but looking for related elements like copper, nickel, chromium. Uh, might look for some platinum group elements, PGE. You might look for some uh, let's see what other things you might be interested in looking for. You might look for some green stones, things like that. If you know that that kind of thing. Uh, specifically, you're looking for the stuff that goes along with. We talked about the elements or the minerals that are associated with gold a couple months ago. This is what we're using in the mapping technique, and uh, a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, we've got the GGM still going, so that's teaching you this technique, but it also has a little bit about this business of how you go off and get other minerals and map them onto your map. So we're going to do a bit of that tonight and talk about how copper and gold go together in Alabama. So let's take a look. So as we're going through these different states, one at a time, looking specifically at the geology, the mineralogy, and the and the location of gold sites that have been found before, we're trying to get a picture. Now, here's the idea with the government gold maps. You're not looking for the specific mine because you're probably not going to get access to it. What you're looking for is what's in the area that you might be interested in looking for a claim or access to a claim that you can go prospect at, including public sites. And so the objective here is not so much finding a specific location as it is finding a trend for the locations in the area. And in this case, we're going to be playing the same game we did last night when we looked at, at copper and we looked at nickel, you know, trying to understand what that might be like uh, looking in areas that are not usually associated with that much gold. OK, and so we looked in Oklahoma and we said, oh, well, what about gold and copper? And sure enough, there's a lot more copper in Oklahoma than there is gold. In fact, there's a lot in areas that don't show gold on the USGS. That doesn't mean there isn't gold in the area. It just means it isn't, it isn't located in the records. So if I see copper in that area, I might think, hmm, look for gold and copper compounds. They were finding it with malachite. That's a copper ore. There may be copper ore with enough gold to be worthy of recovering the gold in it too. So that's kind of the game we're playing here. So right now I'm looking to see whether you guys are on right now and whether you can hear me loud and clear. So let's go back out to the Hunting for Gold page on Facebook, Prospector Jess on YouTube. Let me know in the comments below whether you can hear me and whether this makes sense. We're looking at these different states and the gold in mapping technique, or GGM, government gold maps, and asking ourselves, can we find copper? Can we find gold? And so, uh, yep, we've got you guys. You're coming on, and let's see whether we got. Hello, everybody. Hello, hi, Jess. All. Justin says loud and clear. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate that. Now we'll continue on to the discussion. So let's take a good close look at Alabama. Um, not, that's not Alabama. That's me. Okay. So uh, looking closely here, we see a band of gold prospects in this area. And like we said last night, when you see the gold, and remember we, we saw gold coming clear through this diagonal down the Appalachians through Atlanta, and here it is continuing on into Alabama, and then it sort of peters out. Mississippi, not so lucky, but we'll go into that later. But again, we want to say, hey, if there's gold in this area, is there something that goes with gold? And one of the things I looked up just now in the instant before the show, that's how fast you can find this stuff. Basically, I looked up uh, the following. Let's paint the picture for prospects that include copper. So pop, there goes the copper. I painted them red just like last night, just so you could see the distinction between the copper and the gold. And maybe understand a little more of the association of the two in these, in these regions. Notice as it kind of peters out along these, see these ridge lines here? Those are, those are foothills, mountains, if you will, uh, sloping hills and mountains. Uh, when we get over into the kind of northwest side of this trend, only on, on the map it's northwest side of this trend, I have to reverse the picture because of how things show on the screen and how they show up on the camera. It's kind of gets me goofy. 
So uh, notice the copper up here, Odenville Copper Prospect. And so this is copper, limestone, general. So calcite, calcopyrite, malachite. Now, again, calcopyrite, my brain goes calcopyrite, that can have gold in it. Uh, it may not, but it can. It can have silver in it. So in this case, it's showing up with commodity number one is copper, limestone, and it says general. I don't know what who general is or what general is, but it's not generally a mineral or even a commodity that I know of. So some kind of general, probably limestone, they're producing out of this out of this prospect. Let's look at the data real quickly. Try not to bore you with this, but this is kind of important. So now we're looking at uh, the Odenville Copper Prospect. Four drill holes were taken. Uh, it was an observation bore in 1925. So this was, we were talking earlier uh, about a month or so ago about doing diamond drilling around on a prospect like this, looking for values. They obviously have not uncovered this on the surface. This is a deep vein that they uncovered using using a, a diamond drill or some kind of a drill and coring out the product coming out of it. It doesn't have to be a core. Um, I have panned water wells before, so it's worth doing. And guess what I found? I found lots of pyrites. I found no gold. Darn it. Now, nearby, there are gold veins running through that they cored for. So that's why I was there doing it. Uh, because it was a very important uh, finding and there was we were going very deep we went uh, almost 600 feet deep and so the thing you want to do is if you know what you're looking for check to see if it's coming out of that area and so uh, in that case they were coring in other cases you might be boring a water well just pan the material out or sluice it crush it and sluice it uh, test it x-ray spectrometry comes into mind um, so this is kind of the other thing you know they're looking at limestone here that's probably what general stood for but it's important to kind of look at that let's go back out okay here we are back on our diagram we were looking at this let's see looking at this one odinville here's another one alamag copper just copper occurrence here's another one uh, unnamed prospect Copper is a tertiary compound coming out of this thing. Now we go over and look at some of these gold prospects. What do they look like? Well, let's see. This one just says gold, unknown occurrence. This one says placer. So here we go, a surface gold prospect in Alabama on the Ripito, Ripito placer. That's kind of a cool name. Uh, found in, let's pull it up real quick. And so here we go, 1969, Alabama Geologic Survey, uh, 1948, USGS. So you can kind of see how these pieces come together and they back each other up. Sometimes they're referencing the same reference, the earlier. Sometimes they're a new sampling that was taken. Just can't tell. But at least you know that this particular one is a placer prospect. And uh, it was you know found along... And there seems to be kind of a trend through here. So there might, might even be some more placer down in this area. Auburn, unknown, doesn't say. Uh, or is gold, uh, commodity is gold. Uh, Ballinger Prospect, unknown. Here we go, Childers Prospect, uh, un underground occurrence. So this is getting into load. And look down in here, arsenic, copper, and gold. So arsenic pyrites, copper pyrites, and gold in a load. Arsenal pyrites are, you know, hazardous to your health, be aware of that, but they can actually intermix, just like copper, into gold interstitially in the crystal structure. And so it's important to test for the gold quantities because it can be worth recovering the arsenic and the gold. It takes a special, special chemical processing or a factory high temperature processing to do that. And obviously it takes a special kind of plant that can do it without poisoning half the planet. So you just want to uh, take that in mind that you can find these loads that have values in with all kinds of other industrial strength chemicals. Here's gold, Stewart's AU mine, Parsons mine. Uh, Bessemer makes me think of iron. So one of the things that can go with gold and cannot, we found that up in Michigan, uh, and Minnesota is iron. And so copper is coming out here. It's quite possible that you'll see iron. In fact, I would expect to see it possibly in with some of these. Uh, it isn't mentioned on any of these. And so, yeah, they're all coming out copper. 
but here we go. Stuart Mine, gold and gold. There's a something prospect. So you can kind of see the picture there. It looks pretty flat, and that's likely to be the kind of thing where it would be a little difficult to find the trace. Uh, again, you'll, you might be river prospecting if it is placer gold. Now, I also noticed a couple of them really oddball, you know, right down here, not that far out of uh, Florida, you know, kind of interesting. Um, so here we go, past producer gold, the Eli, Eli mine, Eli mine, and the uh, Chinka mine here. Past producer surface, so this is placer. So here we go. Uh, again, uh, you never know, and that's why you kind of want to go around and look at these various places because you just don't know when you might discover there's gold in kind of an odd place. People have asked me a lot whether there's gold in Florida. Well, there isn't so much, except there's an awful lot of gold offshore because a lot of shipping moved through here and crashed on various reefs and in various hurricanes over the years, centuries kind of thing and dumped gold and silver and bullion in the shoreline. Here's some of the richest prospecting from the standpoint of metal detecting and treasure hunting right along through here. And so it's, it's important to kind of keep your eyes open and your thinking open about what kind of gold you're looking for and how you're going to manage to go look for it and what the laws are. Quite, they're quite different for treasure than they are for uh, mining and prospecting. So just got to educate yourself and go for the gold. So this is uh, kind of what we're doing tonight. Uh, I just thought I'd touch on gold in Alabama and show you the relationship again. Notice the large band of red kind of comes through the gold in this region. Down in here, there's almost no red, which is quite interesting, the mass project. So a known occurrence. Uh, so it's it kind of kind of depends. But again, like in this one, you see this copper sticking right out in the middle of this this other group of things. So this is a Childers Prospect, arsenic, copper, gold. And it's just oftentimes the local chemistry that makes it all the more different and has some other, you know, associated elements. Yesterday, we saw the opposite effect where there was far more gold than, uh, far more copper than gold in Oklahoma. Here we're seeing there's far more gold than, than copper, which is kind of the flip side of the thing. It just all depends on the geology and chemistry of what happened in the history, what happened to the rocks. <coughs> Excuse me. What happened to the rocks and minerals <clears throat> over the geologic time and the erosion that happened here versus the erosion, for example, that happened in Oklahoma and Texas. And that's kind of the story for tonight is we just continue that saga again. Uh, check out, you know, all about gold maps and how to make them and customize them to do this kind of stuff. Sourdoughminer.com. GGM slash ggm okay so check it out and let me know what you think there's uh you know material there on that page that'll tell you what that is and what it costs it's cheap so don't worry about it um it's mainly it you know it, it costs me more to kind of set it up than it does than it than what you get in the way of value out of it by a long shot but it is primarily there for you to just get an access and to understand a little bit about how to get started in this adventure of hunting for gold there's other things we have to teach you more about things like prospecting with a sluice box and, and pan and what to do with, with the various tools and how you look at the creek and read it and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's different stuff. This focuses on just the first element, which is this kind of research where we're poking around while it's still raining or snowing outside and we can find out, you know, kind of where we want to start looking and what it'll take to go find out other information about that light, that location. Uh, so Justin says gold and copper, does that mean it's like that in all states? Good question, Justin. It means it's like that chemically all over the galaxy. Now, they go together. The concentrations vary, kind of like your mileage may vary. Well, in this case, the gold may vary, and it will. That's just the definition. But I always look for them together because when you sniff out the copper, you find there's a band of gold here. I'm circling it. That kind of goes along with that copper. Now, but there's also these other conditions that say, wait a minute, that's not the only story here. Uh, because you were telling PJ, there's all this stuff down here where there is no copper. Now, I'm going to slice up that one chunk of copper there. 
but I'm going to point out that you know there's this major section down below down south southeast in in Alabama that hasn't really got much copper associated with it compared to the part up by Talladega that's just the local geology and usually it means that something happened geologically speaking in ancient history when these mountains were taller that deposited intruded a bunch of copper in in one location and did not in another but intruded some gold in and and not you know not so much ratio gold to copper as there is up north that's all it means but the fact is that copper and gold go together oftentimes in calcopyrites which is a copper ore in the other cases it can mean that there was actually quartz stringers loaded with gold and that's all that was in it or gold and silver which is electrum the other element i might look up would be silver you know so look up and see if there's silver that's a that's kind of a homework assignment so you want to find out if there is gold check for those other associated minerals and look to see especially silver because it typically forms a spectrum all the way from a material called electrum which is very heavy in silver to pure gold and so and it can be any mixture of any 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 variation in carats of gold from you know zero carat gold all the way to 24 and so you just want to find out what it's got or 23 point something but it's going to be close to 24 carat which would be pure and so that's that's it for tonight i just thought i'd touch bases on that same concept we did uh texas is here brad stevens good to see you uh and he's checking out a prospecting and gem show in denver awesome springtime prospecting show so joseph says thank you for the knowledge and marshall wood says love these videos awesome marshall i'm glad you're enjoying them and i'm glad everybody's joining me this is fun doing this stuff especially you know you have this audience it's a virtual one so i have to in my brain see you guys out there not jeering too much okay so awesome justin says thanks for answering that for me so that answers that and so that's interesting info says bob she's thank you i appreciate you letting me know that you're finding what i'm touching on useful i hope that you check out government gold maps and go go take advantage of that offer it's cheap and you can have fun doing this yourself and then ask me questions about it that's that's cool uh, because this will pop more ideas into your head and more questions as it should before you go into the field this is the time right now this time and this season is the place to ask those questions before you bunch you know buy a bunch of gear at the local gold show and then realize that was the wrong gear for the places you're going to be interested in going to because it could very well be that for example in this particular picture i've got drawn that that i'm looking for gold here very differently from over here simply because of the kind of ore i'm pulling up might make a huge difference in what you pack in the back of your truck so uh, just keep that in mind as you're as you're going through this that's the kind of thing you want to take care of so this is prospector jess hunting for gold dot com sourdoughminer dot com check us out join prospector jess on youtube channel join hunting for gold on facebook by simply liking the page and you can also uh follow the page and that will notify you with the information about when we go live because that's where we do the live right now um and let me know what you want what you want to hear more about we're still doing this and we'll be bouncing back and forth from time to time to different states and letting you kind of get a feel for how how to get started where you can find gold and how to get started on what you're looking for when you're trying to prospect for gold in the way of geology mineralogy uh looking at the various history of places understanding the the principles of gold mining and prospecting and the tools and the physics of how they work without knowing physics because that's a big word and uh you know i'll get into hydrogeomorphology that's another huge word big fat word there jess what are you doing so it just simply means the shapes of things that are carved by water and will play a big role in your finding more gold so how can we help you find more gold prospector jess good night and good prospecting see you tomorrow night take care